Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody in between, welcome to another episode of The Chaps Chat Cats, a part of the Hoops Crew Media Network. My name's Jake, and I'm joined in the virtual studio by two highly esteemed gentlemen, Sambo and Johnny. How are we, chaps? Very, yeah, very, very esteemy. It's uh, esteeming up the place. <laughs> Very esteemy. Um, <laughs> a lot to get into on the show tonight. Everybody who tunes into the Hoops Crew Media Network knows Monday night is Chaps Recap Pod. Thursday night, Chaps Preview Pod on the show. Cats v Bulldogs Round 19 Preview. Another big game. Uh, just seems like we're playing big, important matches every week. The Cats um so we're going to preview that as they take on the doggies down at cadinia park and then the back end of the show for our hoops crew patreon subscribers we're going to duck over and deliver our weekly patreon match predictions and as usual we'll also use that time to add any thoughts we didn't get to uh in the public part of the show if you want to access the extended version go on over sign up to the hoops crew patreon you can start a seven-day free trial today. You get VFL men's and women's coverage. I'll be recording my VFL men's preview tomorrow, Friday. You get a Wednesday news wrap. We actually put the, this week's news wrap up for free on YouTube, so you can check that out, even without a seven-day free trial. I watched it trial. myself. Oh, I did you enjoy, Sam? I did. I did. I will say, though, I wanted to table this for the agenda. I have to say, you guys are a little too kind on Colin. All right? There was a couple of couple of things thrown around there was a couple of oh, oh well you know sound drops happened and there was some oh good job colin see this is this is the why his complacency creeps in you know you can't you can't be giving him these kind of easy throwaway compliments because he suddenly thinks he can just sit back and relax and that's when you just keep stuffing stuff up so the content was good news was good loved what you and ben brought to it but uh yeah i, I just feel like uh, we just let the side down as far as uh, keeping the whip cracking with Colin. I think I think we've got to, got to be all on the same page, all above the board here on the right approach for Colin. I might need to watch it and I... see what you mean, Sam, because, yeah, you can't be kind on Colin when he stuffs up because we never were. Yeah. Or when uh, he does the right have... thing because that's when he might... stuffs up. <laughs> yeah, we might have to bring out the, uh, the wheel of pain yet again for Colin right. if it continues. It's true. No, I think that's fair feedback. Sam, I'll take that on board. I'll, I'll I'll let Ben know that as well. Just got to just go yep. a bit harder on Colin. Yeah. Um. Can't let life get too easy. Uh, so yeah, if you want to hear that show, go and watch it. If you want to subscribe to the Patreon, start off with a seven day free trial. Um. Let's get into it. One more thing, of course, to take um action on before we get into the show, and that is to thank our network sponsor, uh, the one, the only. Valhalla Brewing. Get along to the tap room, North Geelong. The no, no, I stuffed it up. Oh, 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 <laughs> How the mighty too much pressure on yourself. <laughs> what has happened? I even quizzed you guys. It is the brew hall in North Geelong. The tap room in the CBD is where you want to go. Uh, if you want to visit the network sponsor of the Hoops Crew, um, Valhalla Brewing, thank them for their sponsorship of the Hoops Crew Media Network. But let's jump. See there, Colin just slipped there. He just didn't put the uh, the the overlay up quickly enough in time. Colin, you've got to really improve on that, chaps. Uh, all the chaps will be angry. Let's jump in, though, chaps. On the show, the Cats v. Dogs, round 19 preview. The Cats looking to make it four wins on the trot. Johnny, going to go to you first tonight. Um, heading into a game against the Dogs, pretty crucial game for them uh, as far as uh, their chances of climbing up higher in the eight. Um you know, another crucial match, I suppose, against a team that is desperate to to get another four points. How are you feeling going into this game? Yeah, it's a very, very crucial match, especially for both teams. Really, like Cats still still are not safe inside the top eight. 
um, inside the top four, inside the top eight. Like, there's only what, one game, two games between us and the dogs. So, yeah, this is a massive game. I feel like there's a lot of massive games this weekend. And that can really ch churn up this latter nicely. So, it's going to be exciting. Um, it's at the Cats' home ground where the dogs don't play exceptionally well. They haven't had much joy here apart from 2023. Against a fairly depleted Cats team that, you know, the season was over, so a lot of the lot of our stars were were out getting surgery, getting a bit of work done on sore bodies and that, so the Cats were a bit off the off their um, best form, especially knowing that the season was ending and the Dogs still, I'm pretty sure, still had a chance to play finals or they were playing finals, so they also started playing with a bit of vigour. Um, but, yeah, this game. It's going to be massive. I obviously think the Cats can win it and should win it at home. Playing well, good football at the moment. Dogs are, dogs are a tough team to know where they're at because some weeks they're really good. Other weeks they've been quite shocking, really. But the drop-off from the best to the worst is probably the most apparent out of all the teams fighting for the top eight. And that's tough because you never know what team you're going to get because they got slaughtered by Port Adelaide in Adelaide. Then they went back home to Marvel and dealt the Blues a fairly handy loss. But, yeah, I, I still think the Cats can get the better of the Dogs. I just feel like this big game at home, home crowd, hopefully get up and about, take out, like they did it earlier in the year at their home ground. So can't see why not they continue the good form against the Dogs and make them suffer another loss at that Cadinia Park. Yeah, it's um yeah, I think you've nailed it perfectly there, John, in terms of the nature of the dog season. It's been sort of bewildering at times. But remember they've they've beaten Fremantle, they've beaten Collingwood, um, you know, they played Sydney really close. Um, as you said, beaten Carlton. It's it's they're an unpredictable side and their best is very, very good. Their worst is pretty um, you know, patchy. So uh, yeah. Uh, Sambo, anything to add in 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 that frame um, for you? Th this particular game, this particular opponent? No, not really. I think you guys have hit the nail on the head. I I feel like it's probably it. It feels like it's been a couple of seasons since we played the Dogs, where both teams were kind of up and about. That's the only thing that kind of does feel noteworthy at the moment. Like I think I feel like we came across them when they were sort of limping a little bit, and then they came across us when we were limping a little bit. Um, and now I feel like. Mm -hmm. Both teams' season's still very much alive, but, you know, with the season how it is, you've got to fight for it. Like you were saying, John, they, you know, there could be still a lot of, a lot of uh, havoc caused with this, with this top eight. So um, season's still very much to fight for, but both teams seem to be in a, in a bit of a good patch form-wise, regardless of, like, obviously we're a bit above them, but just in terms of form, it feels like a right for, an, for a really good clash. No, absolutely, and and they are yeah they are a really talented team. Like I think this is another great test for our midfield, uh, our rejigged midfield. Um, I, I think so. Um, yeah, you welcome you welcome these tests uh, in the lead into finals because it's I, I suppose it's it's a good measure to work out what you've got right and what still needs work. Um, let's talk about team selection because we are recording at eight. 20 past eight on Thursday night. So we actually have the teams, which is nice. We don't always get to align our recording time for when that happens. There's one change, chaps. Um, we have um, one change to the side, and that is Jai Clark omitted. And Mitch Nevitt makes his return to the side. Now he's listed as part of the interchange. So whether or not he ends up being um, a substitute, I suppose will work out. One of these players um, will end up being a substitute. Uh, Brandon Parfit, Ted Closey, Reese Stanley, all named in the emergencies. I'm pretty excited about the fact that Closey is named mm -hmm. emergency. Uh, interestingly, I suppose De Koning listed down back, but... He was last week. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah <it laughs> last three weeks. Middle, really. <laughs> exactly. So, um, But I suppose the important question... Uh, I'll go to you first on this one, Sam. 
what do you think about Mitch Nevitt coming back into the side, Jai Clark going out? Um, do you have any strong thoughts on that or anything else as regards uh, to... Not Sinatra? really. I mean, there, there, may be, there may be technical, tactical reasons behind it. It may be, you know, the height. Obviously, there's a height difference if the dogs, uh, you know, going tall. The dogs can be quite a tall team. Um, and obviously, Nevitt would have a fair bit of height um, on, on Clark. Um, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it's just Nevitt showed some real promise. You know, when he played that game uh, a few rounds ago, um, Clark's had a couple of runs and it's just sort of rotating in and out as as is the the sort of business plan, uh, business as usual, really, for the Cats. So, yeah, as I said, there may be obviously some of those sort of practical, tactical reasons, but it could also just sort of be a... A formality, really, give Clark a, another run in the in the VFL and Nevitt another chance up here. It's interesting, Nevitt, one hundred and ninety three centimeters, Jai Clark one eighty one. So you're absolutely right. Um, does offer uh, a fair bit of a height advantage, 12, 12 centimeters, one eighty, yeah, one ninety three to one eighty one. Um, played a pretty good game in the win over the Dogs last year. Um, Mitch mm. Nevitt midway through mm. the season. That was one of the last games he played uh, for the AFL side. He was dropped um, after that. I think the Cats beat the Dogs, and then from memory, we had our bye, and he didn't come back after that. Um, maybe he might have played the last game of the season against the Dogs. Who did he play against this year? Uh, he played against uh, Essendon uh, and yes. someone else. And, I was, and He played another game. He's played oh, two. Okay. This is his third. And he's probably red. He played pretty well um, too, I think, and, and sort of has been playing well in the VFL as well. It's been, you know, watching him this year, it's been a real obvious focus that they've tried to improve his contested footy as well. Like they know he's all right getting it on the outside, but there's been games this year where I don't think you would have seen it in previous seasons where, you know, he has, say, 25 touches and, you know, half are contested and half are uncontested. Um, he's kind of the opposite of Ted Closey, where it's like you've got no issue with the amount of contested ball close you can win, but you want to see what he can do in uncontested situations so he improve his outside game. Um, Johnny, do you have thoughts about the lineup? And I want to direct your focus here. Uh, Sean Manor, uh, you know, retains his spot in the side. Does that seem like an obvious one to you? Yeah, it does. Yeah, very uh, seems like a very obvious choice to keep Manor in. He's conducting himself extremely well over the two games that he's played. So, yeah, we'll keep him in because, yeah, he's done nothing to warrant being dropped um, apart from maybe a rest like Chai Clark. But, yeah, I think he's gone, done everything that the Cats would be hoping he would do. Like the first week he got the 14 tackles and then the second week he added a few more strings to his bow where he got a, a goal and added a bit more pressure not as much as mm. the first one but he just felt like he added a bit more run on the outside so i'm glad he kept his spot i feel like he'll be a good good player to come up against the dogs along with um mitch never mitch never played against adelaide in round two but okay. he was obviously the sub because he got no touches ah. no stats <laughs> yeah that <laughs> That was the game I actually think he went, he played the last quarter or last five minutes. I think it was after Dangerfield looked like he pulled up with an yeah, injury or something. I mean, and then I'm pretty sure Nevitt turned around and played VFL the next day or something yeah. or the same weekend. Um, happened with Jai Clark too. Jai Clark played a heap of time against the Suns and then played a full VFL game um, a day or two later. So um, they can certainly get some minutes into them. Um, yeah, I guess yeah. I would just say I, I like that there's minimal changes being made. I'm still seeing a lot of dislike for Jack Henry's season. I think it's really harsh. Um, and yeah. look, people yeah. are entitled to their opinions. But what I would say is even if I agreed that Jack Henry was out of form or, or playing poorly, which I don't, um, I think that you've got to look to who, who what do you think the solution is? Because there's no one in the VFL at the moment who is ready to come up. Um, Connor O'Sullivan definitely needs another off-season uh, in the gym, working out how to get an AFL frame uh, together. Emerson Jecker, 
perhaps could, but like he's a totally un, untested commodity. And I, I don't know. I just think Jack Henry is deserving to hold his spot. I, I think um, having Jack Henry in the side allows Stewart to push forward. It allows De Koning to play in the ruck to cover those areas. I'm glad Lawson Humphreys retains his side. I really hope, chaps, that when we see the substitute named, that it's not Gary Rowan, because I think Gary Rowan playing full four quarters the last few weeks has been crucial to our turnaround. Yeah. I know people have sort of focused on that. We look better without Hawkins. I think, it, as we've discussed on the pod, it's more we look a lot better with Gary Rowan in the mm. side. Um, I think that's more what I'd focus on um, there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about what we want to see uh, from this game, from the Cats. Um, does anyone have one that they're like, yes, I've got to share it right now? Um, um, or, or, or... I'd just like to see Shannon Neal continue on his good form, like he's been doing well. I'd like to see him clunk a few more marks, lead up a bit more, and just be a bit more of a big presence. But I think the last two weeks he's started to really come into his game and start showing what he is capable of. As we said during the recap, it's going to take a while before he gets to the dominant full forward, but you know, the science, uh, the foundation he's set for himself is really good. I'd just like to see him continue on doing that and just kick some more goals, kick more goals, get more confident in himself, crash the packs, bring it down to ground for the, the close and stangle like he did last week. And just continue in that good form and be a presence, mainly. Just be that big presence down forward that I think he could be. I like that. Sambo, what do you want to see? Uh, I, I, I'm i going for a pretty basic kind of one. I just want to see Jezza have a really good outing. Uh, nice. And from, from the start onwards, I'd like to see him conquer Mark and, you know, kick a, kick a set shot within the first sort of first half of the first quarter. Uh, I think his games are always... Um, Go behind. Sort of, yeah, yeah. He's. I think he's, he's, he lives and dies by his first attempt on goal sometimes. It can take him a while to drag his uh, eye back in. Uh, and I think he's really threatened. Like he's, of course, he hasn't been bad. He's been, you know, vote-worthy and probably MVP several times in the last few weeks. But I still think he's just been threatening to get to his best. Uh, and as far as the rest of the ground goes, it's kind of, from my point of view, it's kind of just more of the same, please. So I don't have any one particular thing I want to see from anywhere else, but I would like to see that reward for effort once we get it up there. Um, I think mm. I think it's a unique time for us to be playing the dogs because in the past, it's, all, it's always been about this, like, oh, we've got to weather their midfield. We've got to weather their midfield. The way our midfield's been going lately, I feel like we can match their midfield. Um, and if we can match their midfield, and I'm, I'm fairly confident our backline can hold up. So it's really on the, on what Johnny wants to see. It's on Neil, and it's on who I want to see. Cameron, uh, I'd love to see Cameron come out and kick an absolute bag. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've sort of touched on a, a little bit of what I want to see, and that that sort of focuses in on the midfield. But I, I'm really looking forward to seeing Tom Stewart and mm. Patrick Dangerfield uh, go head to head with the Dogs midfield. Um, I really want another go at Carlton with this reconfigured yeah. midfield. I think it just looks different. Um, Tom and Stewart. Uh, yeah, Sydney. I want, I want to go at everyone. I, I want us to make a deep finals run because I don't think there were, there were things happening in that losing streak that I don't think um, are a fair representation of, of what Geelong's best is. Um, mm. And so I think they've worked a few things out. I think Stewart going in at the center stoppages and stuff um, playing midfield has been a, a, a really nice move. I love the physicality he adds. And I'm just looking forward to seeing that. I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, Stewart, Dangerfield, Atkins, Bose, Holmes, those guys just, you know, going hard at the dogs midfield. I think it can be a really good battle. I think it will be really fun to watch and, like you, Sambo, I think we've got the quality there and the grunt to get it done. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think we have to accept a flogging in the clearances or something um, to get the the win on the weekend. I think we can we can hold our own in that area of the ground. 
Um, I think we can win regardless of whether we can or not, as we've shown at times <laughs> this season. But yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this mid, how our midfield stands up because I think we covered it a bit on the news show, and that was it. it a lot of the attention after the game was about Geelong's, you know, use of uncontested kicking and marking. It sort of went under the radar that. The Cats lost the hit out 62 to 24 or whatever it was and beat the Pies in clearances 42-35 and smacked them out of the center bounces. Like, it would have been hard to predict that. I think even being optimistic, I would have said, I'd love to see us break even at the stoppages with the Pies. And we really had the better of them um, for large stretches of the night. So I think we've definitely found some, some answers and solutions there. So I just, I want to see more of that. Beautiful. All right. Yeah, sure. okay. That's it. That is the public show finished. We are now going to go over to the Patreon part of the show. We're going to do our match predictions and add any final finishing touches on our thoughts ahead of this game. So if you want to get access to that part of the show, make sure you go on over and start your seven-day free trial. You get access to. All the stuff we normally say, the VFL men's and women's coverage, the Wednesday news wrap, scratching post episodes from Paul, extended versions of our podcasts, and a lot of other stuff as it happens. Also, make sure you go on over on the YouTube side of things and watch post-game live after the game finishes. Um, Not only can you watch and listen along with Ben and Paul, you can also jump in on the conversation. Um, They do take a bit like callback radio. They do take people onto the stream with them um, to chat about the game. So that is after the final siren sounds, generally an hour or two after the game concludes um, each weekend. Make sure you go on over on the Hoops Crew YouTube and check out Post Game Live. But as usual, we will play you out with our favorite four-legged co-host, the Halftime Horse. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Thanks for watching liking, subscribing, all of the things. And until next time, go cats. Go cats. Go cats. <laughs> we get your cordial, we get your stuff. Your lollies are uh, a spray it's from the coach. Lollies, yeah. absolutely. Cordial, like spray. So you get your cordial, you get your, yeah. your lollies are uh, a spray from the coach. It's lollies, absolutely. Yeah. Like spray. That's what half time's yeah. about.